Hello and good evening, uh, good afternoon, good morning to wherever you are here in the world. Welcome to our online event. Um, it is almost 7.30 here in Tokyo. So uh, let's get started. So today's uh, online event is an online president seminar uh, together with our very own president, Yoshito Hori, who will be discussing about how Globus is attending to disrupt the MBA and talk about the future of business education. Now, who am I? I'm Sven van Stichel. I'm originally from Belgium. I've been living here and working in Tokyo for the last 10 years, and I'll be your moderator for tonight. So nice to see you all. So today we have a very um, easy agenda. I'll give you a quick introduction to Globus and that will be followed by the president seminar. Then there's a special part where you can do a Q and A with President Hori. So please prepare questions during the event and share them later on. And then I'll wrap up with some admissions information and event information for the future. So for those who are new to Globus, let me tell you a little bit about Globus. Globus was founded in 1992 in a small apartment in downtown Shibuya. Uh, we only had one employee, which is the founder, Yoshito Hori, you can see here. He obtained his MBA at Harvard Business School and wanted to bring that kind of business education to Japan, but also put a focus on um, providing new values to society. So with that mission in mind, in just uh, one course, marketing course with 20 students, that's how we started. We started from scratch. Fast forward, 2019, we have over 900 MBA students a year studying with Globus, making us the largest MBA provider in Japan. We have five campuses all over Japan, as you can see, now we're in our Tokyo campus. And we also have three overseas offices in Singapore, Shanghai, and Bangkok, where we also deliver corporate training. Exciting news, we will also establish a Singapore campus uh, later this year. So we've gone quite global, we've grown a lot. And right now we have over 100,000 business professionals who have studied with us, people like myself, but also executives from the top companies in the world. And not just from Japan, but over 50 countries are represented at Globus, making us a global business education provider. Now, just quickly about Globus differences, what makes us so special compared to other schools. We're quite a different animal. We have this unique entrepreneurial spirit. We started from scratch, but we also have our own venture capital. We teach a lot about entrepreneurship. We also teach about kokorozashi, personal mission in English. It means finding that ultimate goal in life and it means to achieve it, to ultimately contribute to society. And of course, practicality. From the very beginning in 1992, our focus was whatever you learn, we want you to be able to apply it at work the very next day. So we have business professionals teaching you, we have state-of-the-art curriculum as well, even courses focused on technology, technological trends, keeping it as practical as possible. So that's a quick introduction to Globus, but this session will be an interactive session. So let's just first see if you can use the chat function that Zoom provides. So where are you from? Please let us know in the chat box. When chatting, please make sure that you select all panelists and attendees so we can see uh, all your comments. So go ahead and uh, press the chat and tell us where you're joining us from. So we have Eunice from Malaysia. And where else are you joining us from? Just share it in the chat box. During the session as well, we'll have Q&A with President Hori. So the chat box will be a main tool to communicate with him as well. So we have someone from Vietnam as well, Kondo San. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, great. So it seems we have quite a global audience. Some of you did not select uh, all attendees. That's okay. It seems we have an international audience joining us here today. So thank you so much. So moving on to the actual president seminar. But before I do so, let me just quickly reintroduce President Yoshito Hori. He's the chairman and CEO of Globus Group. Uh, he's the president of Globus University. And he's also managing partner of Globus Capital Partners, our venture capital arm. He obtained his MBA from Harvard Business School 
and a bachelor's in engineering from Kyoto University. He's also the founder of Young Entrepreneurs Organization, the Japan chapter, and chairman of the Asia Pacific region. He's written many books, written a lot of articles, um, but just to visualize what he's done, he's a speaker, moderator at the World Economic Forum. Here you can see he, him with the Prime Minister Abe. Uh, he's well connected with the political and business world. He's also a school president, as I mentioned. In fact, I'm an MBA graduate and I studied under him as well. He's a famous entrepreneur here in Japan. Um, he's a philanthropist as well. We currently own a basketball team. We also have uh, several um, activities uh, that help society here in Japan. So without further ado, I'll introduce him to him, but also our dialogue partner for today. It's Gabrielle Plum from Germany, who is currently a full-time MBA student. So I'll just stop talking right now, and I will now connect you with the president and Gabby. So please give me one second. Right. Hello, everyone. So uh, welcome once again, and thank you for joining us at the online president seminar. Um, as mentioned previously, I'm Gabriella, current full time student here, and I'm here with our very own president, Hori San. So thank you Hello. for joining us. Hello. I'm so glad to be with you tonight or today or <laughs> <laughs> whatever time it may okay. be where you are. Um, so before we go into questions, just a reminder, if you do have any questions for Hori San, please post them in the chat so that we can then refer them to him and have him answer those. Um, but with no further ado, okay. let's go into some overall questions that we have for you. Um, so if we look at the history of Globus, um, and we think back to the start, do you remember why and how exactly did you start Globus? Okay, it was, uh, I was 28, 29. The vision came to me that I should create some kind of ecosystem for startups. And uh, um, I'll give you the reason why. That time, it was 1989 to 1991. It was a time of the bubble in Japan. Sony was co buying Columbia Picture. Mitsubishi was buying Rockefeller Center. And people thought that Japan was number one. But after studying MBA, I realized that Japan was only winning in capital intensive business, like Sony, Toyota, Nippon Steel. But the US has shifted away from capital intensive business more to knowledge intensive business. Like uh, uh, that time it was uh, Microsoft, Apple, and then it was Google, Amazon, and Facebook, and then Tesla, and Uber, and Airbnb. So in order to create knowledge intensive business, I thought that we need to have a good education and venture capital. So the vision came up to me to have the ecosystem for people, capital, and knowledge for creation and innovation. People, capital, and knowledge is like uh, three basic colors. If you have blue, green, and red, you can create any color you want. If you have people, capital, knowledge, you can create and innovate any kind of companies. People means business school. Capital means venture capital. Knowledge means more like a publishing or maybe like something for the conferences. And that vision came to me. And then I think I thought I should create a business school which will educate leaders to create startups, entrepreneurs, and then so it has to be more practical. And then that time I was only about 29 when I graduated. At the age of 30, uh, as uh, Sven showed uh, the slide, that uh, I started on my own with an apartment close to downtown Shibuya and rented out a classroom for $300 for school basis for two, for two hours. And then that's how I started. And uh, um, so, and so that's, that's great. So, I want to educate leaders for entrepreneurs and at the same time create new industries for ecosystem for startups for creation and innovation. Wow, so you had quite a vision at the start um, and started really, really small. So going from that small apartment that you had, um, how did you how were you able to bring all this to expand to be the number one business school within Japan? When I started about 27 years ago in 1992. Uh, there was no brand, nobody knew about Globus. And there was no students, and there was no capital, and there was no credentials. 
And the only way we could attract and build brand was to make sure that our quality of education is superb and exceeding the expectation of those who have studied at Globus. So we, what we have decided to do is to provide quality guarantee. Quality guarantee means that if anybody decides that Globus education is not up to his or her expectation, we pay back tuition 100%. And that's how I tr we try to listen to the voices of the students and try to make sure everything that we provide is exceeding the expectation. And that's how we have come up with a very practical and very good education system, good faculty, and then the, the uh, satisfaction rate of students have been quite high. And that's how we are able to build brand. That's how we are able to build reputation. And so it was a small startups but gradually we built the reputation. And at the, at the uh, age of 34, no, it was at, at the age of 44, when in 2006, we were able to get the credential, accreditation from the government of Japan. So, um, so 2006, we became university. Before that, it was not accredited. And 2006, uh, Globus has become accredited university. And so we were able to get license to issue MBA and in 2012, we started full-time MBA, which you are now enrolling. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And, and that's how you know, we, we made sure that everybody, whoever touches Globus, has to be satisfied, even though he or she may be a reader or of books, or he or she may be a student of one class, or he or she may be the participant of the seminars, or, or you who are uh, enrolling our online seminar for the first time, we have to make sure that all of you are happy and are satisfied. That's how we are able to build a brand from scratch. Wow, so Globus has come a really long way in that time there. Yeah. It's amazing to hear how far it is really. Um, so you mentioned that you had uh, the quality guarantee, which is something very unique to, um, to Globus, I believe. Are there some other unique features about Globus? What is it that makes Globus so unique? Well, we say five things that are quite different from other business schools. We try to be different animal, as Sven mentioned. Different animal means we have to be totally different from other business schools. One is that you mentioned quality guarantee. No other business school, school provide quality guarantee. So our curriculum is 100% quality guaranteed. If you don't like it, we pay back tuition. So that's why we are making sure every quality is high. Second is uh, we call ourselves entrepreneurial, creation and innovation. We are quite different from other business schools that, like Stanford and Harvard, they are the attachment of big university of Stanford University, Harvard University. Mm -hmm. But in case of Globus, we started from scratch. So entrepreneurial spirit is embedded in Globus. And therefore we teach entrepreneurship and the spirit is also there. And people want to be startups and people want to innovate. So we say second thing which is different is creation and innovation. Third thing which is different is practicality. Now, I started from scratch and I don't have PhD, but I'm a president and we try to be practical. We don't try to teach about theory of management. We try to give you the uh, skills and also knowledge and also experiences as great leaders through case method, uh, which is practically applicable in your businesses. And so we try to be as practical as possible. Fourth thing we say is we try to be not only teaching about the skills, but also mindset. Being a leader, you have to have a strong mindset. Not, you have to be able to take risks. You have to have an entrepreneurial spirit. That will come from thinking about what you want to do in your life and thinking about your philosophy. So we talk about philosophy, we talk about personal mission, and we try to engage people to know about your or other people's uh, personal mission and that's what we feel is important because you want to, you want to be taking risks. You don't have to be just only, you, you not only have to be smart, also you have to be able to be knowing about what your mission is. And so therefore we talk about fourth about mindset. Five is about, we call technology. And we can talk about it later, but you know, we feel that technology is changing uh, the world. And therefore we feel that the technobate, we call technobate is going to be important. 
Wow. So there was a lot that you mentioned about leaders in that. Um, and Globus does seem very focused on it and this, uh, the practicality as well from experience. They're very practical in classes. It's really amazing to see. Um, but talking about leaders, what are some skills that you think leaders will need in the future? Well, I've been running a venture capital since 1996 for more than 23 years. And what we are seeing, the changes and trend happening in startups are the technology. Uh, the technology is changing the way we do businesses. Not only startups, but also big companies as well. Let's talk about retail department stores that are being taken over by Amazon. And let's talk about taxi as being Uber. And hotel is uh, Airbnb. And or even big companies like Toyota may be uh, in challenges by autonomous vehicles or electric cars like Tesla. And then, and then they talk about MAS, mobility as a services. So the mobility, they, not many people may own the car that, uh, from now on. They will be using mobility only as a services. And that kind of change is happening because of technology. So in the future, what the leaders have to know and have to be understanding about technology so that what kind of impact the technology is going to bring into businesses. And therefore we call Technobate, technology plus Innovate. And you, we create the word called Technobate. Ooh, technology, Innovate, ooh, Technobate. And we create the word Technobate. And then that's what you're going to be needed. You, know, you have to understand about technology. You have to understand about business model which are going to be changed. You have to under, uh, understand about AI and robotics, sharing the economy, and also about IoT and so forth and big data as well. Oh, so talking about technology, um, how would that apply to an MBA? So let's say 10 years from now, what do you think uh, an MBA would look like? I've been thinking about the education in the future. Let's say from, uh, let's say from 100 years from now, let's say 50 years from now, what would be the education going to be look like? The education has not been changed since Socrates days, like uh, 2,500 2, years ago. And it has not changed. You, know, you face with teacher, you have some discussions, and that's how the education has been done. Well, we may have come up with textbook, may have, we may have, have, have come up with some methodology like uh, our university and also about teaching method. However, it has not been changed. Basically, you have a you know, physical uh, campus, and you meet classroom, and you have a textbook, and so forth. But because of technology, education is going to be changed. We tried online business school, online classes in 2014. Before that, we thought that you know, there is not enough online bandwidth of, uh, of telecommunication bandwidth, so that you know, the, the speed was not fast enough. But nowadays, you know, because online, because I've been talking to you online, you know, online education has become more and more practical and more and more pragmatic and more and more productive way of learning. So the future is going to be looking more like online. So you switch on a phone, maybe on a smartphone, you can learn and you can discuss on online. And the experiences that we have had by testing initially on online classroom was that the reaction of students say that the experiences learning and has been almost identical, sometimes better than actual classroom. And, and we've done lots of questionnaires to students. And then the, the, this, the feedback has been coming the same. Even as a professor, if you teach, the reaction seems to be sometimes better. And if it's better or identical or quite equal, then you don't have to come to classes any longer. You can switch on mobile phones and then you can participate in classrooms. And then that's going to be the future of education. When we started online MBA, what we have decided to do is to abolish paper. Because you know, if you have paper, you have to send it over. So every classroom textbook, and every curriculum, syllabus, and everything discussion has become online. So the future of education is going to be everything on online. So we are, we are investing heavily on the technology on online. Nowadays, uh, because of the online, you know, books became ebooks. But ebooks, for me personally, is not very exciting because it's just the paper becoming digital, and it's not very exciting. 
But in case of online, you can create the video clips and you can create animation, you can create slideshows. So what we have decided to do is not to update textbooks, but more to invest into uh, video and online education for learning about the management theories and also about knowledge and also investing into e-learning. So the future is going to be online, digital, with AI, and with also about data collected because you know, by online you can see who is participating well. And you know, most evaluation could be done online as well. And so the future of education is going to be online, digital, and AI. Mm. Wow. And then Globus, in order to bridge that gap between the two, is moving more into the online classes then? Yeah. We hired uh, engineers mm -hmm. and designers and also about you know, community leaders uh, from zero about three years ago, and now we have more than 100. So Globus is now trying to change ourselves to ed tech companies. Mm -hmm. So it used to be like education with physical campuses. We still have physical campuses in Tokyo, Osaka, Nagoya, Sendai, Fukuoka, and in the future in Shanghai, in Singapore as well. But we are investing heavily on the online and also digital and AI. So to bridge the gap, invest heavily into online. So we used to benchmark like Harvard Business School or Stanford Business School, but now we decide not to because we don't feel that those schools represent the future of education. So we have to create our own image. We have to create our own future by investing into technology, AI, digital, and so that we can bring to you the best experiences ever, uh, anywhere you are, to study online, digital, and AI. Well, thank you very much for those answers. Um, what we will do now is let's see if we have some questions as well from our yeah. attendees. Um, that maybe we can ask Kori san. So if you have any questions, please post them in the chat so that we can relay them on. Give us a moment as we try to find them. Before, if there's no mm -hmm. question so far, let me ask you a question. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> Please do. So why did you decide to enroll mm. at Globus? Ooh, that's a good <laughs> question. Um, so I was actually halfway through application to another university. Oh, is that right? Yes, I was wanting to do my MBA. Mm -hmm. I knew that much. Um, and I was supposed to go to South Korea. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. But the Globus uh, team, they mm -hmm. did a trial class mm -hmm. in the city I was staying in. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of advertising and I thought, I need to check this out. Okay. So I went to the trial class. Okay. And I did a critical thinking class mm -hmm. with the professors and the practicality of it just blew me away. Okay. It was not just textbook. It was learning from your classmates and professors. And it was a style of teaching I hadn't come across before. Okay. And honestly, that, that was it. Okay. <laughs> I just, I made my decision from then on. I just, I see. Do we have any questions yet? Maybe I'll give you another yes. question. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, then. okay, the next question may be, so what is your experience so far? You have been studying at Globus mm -hmm. for the past about nine months? Yes, about okay. that time. What is your experience so far? Um, so, so far it's been a very good experience. Okay. Um, as said, it's been a very practical type of classes. We have very, uh, for the full-time program, it's very okay. international. Mm -hmm. So we don't just learn from our professors, but also our classmates. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a very good experience with a lot to learn, not just from others, but you're pushed to learn by yourself as okay. well. Um, and to really find your kokorozashi, oh, that's your good. personal mission. So, that's very good. Yes, and so I think we do have some okay, questions coming good. in. Okay. Uh, so our first question is, why do an MBA in Japan? Well, why do I do an MBA in Japan? Mm -hmm. Maybe you should answer the question. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, from my point of view, there's a lot of opportunity right now. So the Globus campus is in Tokyo, and Tokyo is booming currently with a lot of opportunities if you look into entrepreneurship or just companies in general going global. There is a lot of opportunity here. It's exposure to another culture, and it's just an amazing experience. Um, would you like to add something to well, that? Well, you know, Tokyo is a great city, and you will like it. 
and it's safe and it's clean and it's punctual and also it's you know, gigantic and exciting and the food is great. So Tokyo location is great. At the same time, Japan, you know, one month ago, I met uh, Professor Klaus Schwab, who is the founder and chairman of World Economic Forum, which manages Davos conferences. He said that Japan is the most stable democracy in the world because of the you know, Brexit in UK and what's happening in mm -hmm. most of the you know, divided societies in the US. And Japan has become very stable. And the economy is the second largest uh, democratic economy uh, in the world. And there's technology. And there's Globus here in Tokyo. So why not? Come to, come to get MBA at Globus in Japan. Yes, please do. Um, and then another question we have is, what is the first class in Globus and First class in Globus that we started 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. Is it or like uh, which class to take first? I believe if I'm if I'm getting this question right, so please correct us if we're wrong. I think it's from Toshiya, so let us know if we are wrong in this. But I think it's what class do we take first when okay. you come to Globus? Well, as you, what class did you take first? I remember there were a few of them, but my first one I remember is critical thinking. Yeah. The critical thinking is the you know, operating system, OS, of the brain. So if you understand about how to think clearly and how to analyze, the critical thinking will give you the uh, operation system, how to think, how to analyze, and how to structure your uh, 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 thoughts around. And that will be the best class to start, critical thinking. And then, oh, on top of uh, operation system, you can put applications like marketing, finance strategy, human resource management, and operation strategy, and accounting, so forth. And those are the applications. And on top of application, you can have more and more something like a mingle, like a, a creation, mm -hmm. like startup you know, courses, and also uh, and also innovative courses, or more about globalization courses or cross-cultural courses. So basically, you know, critical thinking is first to start. And application is mostly for the first, first year core classes. And then second year, you can have uh, some kind of advanced courses. In case of Globus, we have a two-year MBA program and one-year MBA program. Gabby is a one-year full-time MBA program. And then most of the uh, people who study while they're working, so they study at night and on the weekend, they take two year program. So first year program, which is for you, it's a, like until the first half of the program is mostly basically on the core curriculums. And then on top of it, second year program, which is your latter uh, courses are focused more on the creation and innovation and more about advanced, you know, uh, uh, more, uh, uh, more complex issues in, in businesses. So going off, since we're talking about courses, we have a question that says, what are Globus's most practical courses? <laughs> well, every courses are based on case method. So all the courses, we don't do any lectures. Lectures tend to be more oriented towards uh, theory or more about academic you know, uh, management theory and uh, some knowledges. In case you do any kind of courses and cases, cases are actual cases which will bring to you the practical analysis, practical decision making, practical uh, action plan you have to come up with. So it's difficult to mention which courses are the most practical, but it really depends on which uh, issues you have, which uh, you're facing in your real business. If you don't know much about accounting or strategy, for you, I think you know, taking a strategy course, or accounting course, may be most practical to you. So it really depends on what kind of needs you have and what kind of things you, you lack in your businesses, in your skills, which you want to be furnished with. I think that you would rather take that course after critical thinking. Yeah, I fully agree with you on that from the, taking the classes. So yes, I think everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. And so that will really depend on the 
person. Um, so moving into another question we have, so we're going to diverge a bit. Okay, sure. This one is, how do you evaluate companies to invest in? Well, it's a very good question. Uh, it's a very difficult question in short period of time. You need to be more elaborate. But try to answer in a, in a concise way how to analyze the company to invest in. Well, uh, first of all, we try to uh, judge entrepreneurs or management team's capability. And uh, it's difficult to judge their capability, but you invest in people, not in business, not in, in startups. In buyout firms, you, you invest into businesses, but in startups, it's mostly you invest into people. So first of all, you have to be able to judge uh, entrepreneur skills by meeting them in person through management presentation. Second, no, you need to, we always judge about entrepreneur's capability in formulating businesses and showing the track record of what they have done. And then, and then you know, uh, asking them about the future business plan. And if those business plan and their track records, as well as the competition within the markets and also the um, possible market expansion. Combining that, if it makes sense for me to invest into them and businesses uh, will do. So it's people and then business and then market. You know, that's what we discussed, we decided to invest into. So three very important points. Yeah. Yes. Um, and another question is, we, we did touch previously on Kokorozashi or your personal mission um, in our dialogue, but the question is, how do you develop the Kokorozashi at Google? Well, it's, Kokorozashi is not really to develop. It's more to realize about what your Kokorozashi is. So I believe that people have some kind of things that he or she wants to do. But it's, it's difficult to find out what he or she wants to do. And so you have to really, first of all, understand about what you are good at and what you are excited at and what you are also uh, passionate about. And then you know, that's what, you know, you, it's more like a realizing about yourself, like going to inner self and try to find out what you want to do uh, and what you're excited to do and what you're passionate about, what you're good at. And in order to do that, you have to be exposed to lots of, as many different opportunities as possible. Because if you are confined to very limited experiences and a limited world, your, uh, in, your uh, vision might become smaller so you can choose from very small, narrow option. But if you broaden your option by talking to lots of people who are your classmates and then listening to their, you know, Kodazashi, their personal mission statements, and meeting in businesses or meeting the other business people who come to classes to make a speech or doing some intern on businesses and at the same time doing some cases by meeting in person, not in person, meeting through the classroom of the experiences of other entrepreneurs and knowing about other functions like a marketing career, finance career, or entrepreneurial career and finding about those and then you, you, know, you will be, if you broaden so big, you become at a loss. You don't know which one to choose from. Yes. And, then, and then you just have to find out about you know, what you want to do by talking to them. And then you have to judge about which one you like to do, which, mm -hmm. which one you are excited to do about. And then just go into that you know, company or like businesses and try to find out about whether or not you want to do. It's more like a, that kind of process of uh, broaden and getting to know, going inside, and going in, and knowing about yourself, and then knowing about your strength. And that process, I hope you'll find your kokorozashi in uh, one or two years through MBA. And even after you graduate, I think it's, it's important to pursue. Because if you know about which way you want to live for, you know the direction. The, uh, my experiences tell me that the uh, worst time of my personal history was the time that I didn't know which way to go. So mm -hmm. it kind of, you are at loss. But if you know which way to go, you know which way to walk to, and you feel much better. But if you don't know which way to go, which you don't know about your, you know, like your dream or your mission, 
you know, your atlas, you don't know which way to go. So your atlas, you just dive into nothing. So it's important to pursue what you want to do and try to find out the overall vision. Even though it may not be a clear vision, I think it's good to walk through and find out what you want to do. Yes, that's some very good points. Um, so we have another question actually that's to do with the future again. Yeah. So the question is, what is your image of a classroom 20 years from now? <laughs> okay. um, and so the person asking this question said, his background is in IT, so he doesn't have any experience in business. How can I prepare if I want to join this program? Well, quite a few um, uh, students have very little experiences in real businesses. Like uh, we have some lawyer, and we have some medical doctor, and we have some sport, you know, like professional sport uh, uh, player, and uh, they don't have actual real businesses, but they know how to manage maybe hospital. They know about the organization, or they know how to deal with companies or corporate as a corporate lawyer, or they know how to manage the team as a maybe as a player. So. Uh, that kind of experiences anywhere, may IT as well, he or she will be knowing about how to create a product as well. And some of them are engineers from Toyota, they have not done any businesses. But that, you don't have to prepare. You know, all you have to just come in and study from scratch. And then you have to work hard to, to learn about what, what you think about it. And then, and then have some classroom discussion and group discussion and, uh, and they absorbed as much as possible from textbooks or from Globis Unlimited, which is an online digital education platform. And uh, so it's not much preparation uh, you need. What do you think like uh, your experience say? Um, so from classmates, we have people from all sorts of different backgrounds and experience wise as well. So we have, I think the minimum requirement is two or three years. Um, so we have some people who've been in the industry for years, but then as Horisa mentioned, there's others who they haven't been in it as long or they have a very different kind of background. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you succeed more if you come from one background or the other. Really it is about applying yourself and learning at your pace, learning what's best for you and being able to switch over in that point of view. So um, I think you're absolutely right in what you said where you have people from all different walks of life and background, but um, it's about learning and acquiring the skills and being able to just be in a place that's able to provide you with that. Good, very good question. All right, um, and then I do believe um, there's another question we had back at Kokorozashi. So we're gonna backtrack for a moment okay, here. Sure, sure. So we had someone ask, um, how do you apply your Kokorozashi in a corporate setting? If you are working for a large corporation, how does your kokorozashi play into that? Okay, um, there are basically three types of kokorozashi. One is a, about the kokorozashi within the organization, like a company that you work for. And then he or she may come up with kokorozashi within the organization or the company you work for because he or she believes that the mission of the company echoes with the mission of yourself. And if that's the case, it's such a great you know, place to work for because you feel great about what you're doing. And then you have the team, you have the you know, uh, friends who are working for the company, and then you can you know, materialize what you want to do uh, in contributing to society through businesses in your company. That's one thing. The other type is that, well, I may not be, you know, uh, uh, well, uh, echoing, I may not be in, uh, feeling you know, uh, good about what the company is looking for. So he or she may try to choose different company and then try to come into the company and that he or she thinks that is much better suited for his or her course action. That's the second time. Mm -hmm. Change the career and then work for the companies that he or she feel passionate uh, about. Third type is that, well, we, we could not find anything uh, from you know, his or her own company or other companies in the option. Let's start one from scratch. And uh, maybe he or she may start a, uh, like a social entrepreneurial activities 
or companies like startups in technology. And that's the third type. Maybe it's the another type who may choose to become, let's say, an individual consultant or individual freelance, you know, who will provide knowledge and insight and some management consulting jobs to other people. Or maybe he or she may choose to become a professor. So it's really up to you know, what you feel like by broadening your perspectives and choosing a, what, about what you want to do. And if it happens to be in coinciding, if it happens to be echoing what the company is doing for and, and your, what, your, what you want to do, I think that's the case, you, you will still, you will remain in the company, which I think is good. You know, it's such a great place to be in. So um, to going back to your question, it really depends what you want to do by looking to other people. And then there are quite a few people who end up working for his or her own company, which is fine, which is also a great thing. Um, so I saw another question a while back. So somebody asked, how can they leverage an MBA from Japan into postgraduate developing job skills? Or how can they use it um, within the job field? Well, the future of the world is Asia. 50% of GDP will be in Asia. And uh, so therefore, Japan is the leading country, one of the leading country in Asia. It's the most advanced uh, uh, country in Asia. And therefore, it's, uh, it's better to start in Japan. And if you are, let's say, from other regions, which is like uh, Europe, like you, or the US or Africa or South Africa, South America, I think Asia is a place to be, to learn about MBA because it's important to know about Asia. And uh, Japan is a good place to live and it's very stable and clean and uh, it's rich. And also it's such a great country to live in. It's good. For those people who are coming from Asia, you know, Japan, as you know, is the leading economy. It's most advanced in Asia uh, in businesses and it has a good ecosystem of startups as well. So it's good to be uh, studying at uh, Globus in Japan. Mm -hmm. So I think Japan is a great place to study. Mm. Going off of that, um, okay. we have another question that actually refers to this as well. So studying in Japan, doing your MBA here, but how will, how will the program, how can it be applied to businesses in Europe and the US? So um, I believe this question refers to, is it possible to apply to clients that are located in uh, more the Europe and the US area? Well, let's ask you a question. How many cases are Japanese companies? How many cases are American companies? Mm -hmm. the, the, the ratio of the cases. How many cases are European? Mm. So I'm going to have to say that it's an even mix. Okay. Actually, um, depends on the class you're taking again. If you decide to focus on Japanese um, classes that focus on Japanese companies and corporations, you will get um, cases from Japan and Asia. But the other ones have been a good mix of it. We've had a lot from India, from Europe, from the US, other places in Asia, and even from Africa. So it's cases from all over. So management is management. Management in Japan, management in the US, management in Europe is, uh, you know, there may be some differences in culture uh, because of the law regulation and because of the size of the market and because of the stage of the maturity in industries in each country. It may be different. However, it's a very fraction, you know, small portion of changes. So what you learn at Globus is the management, which will be applicable globally. And therefore, we, even though we are teaching you in Japan, uh, and we are the business school for Japan, we don't only teach those who are only applicable to Japan, but also globally. So, um, so it's, it's a very global mix of students. I think, you know, uh, your class, what is the percentage of Japanese people in your class? We have one <laughs> Japanese student in our yeah. class. Um, so it's just about two or three percent. Yes, yes. So it's a very mixed, it's a very global, diverse mm -hmm. mix of students. So uh, you know, we are providing you the classroom in Japan. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the students are mostly coming from outside of Japan. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
students. And then you also get to mix with the other Japanese students in just the facilities here and well sure, as some sure. of the other classes. So it is, that's very true as well. Um, the classroom is very widely mixed, lots of different cultures. Um, and I think ultimately what you learn here, you really can apply it um, anywhere else. So let's say you look for maybe any last call questions that we have. I think we may still have one or two. Ah, here we go. Okay. All right. So, oh, okay. So this question is, I have never been to Japan before, and it seems like it's a culture and work environment where they would be very different compared to home country. How can joining an MBA program at Globus help me to adapt and succeed in Japan? Well, I think maybe... You may be better. <laughs> I'm getting questions thrown at me yeah, today. No, because, no, I think, no, some of the questions may be answered better by, by Gabby. Because you know, your experience is better. If I say that, you know, maybe too much like a promotion. Oh. Like a, but your voice may be better sometimes. I'll give it, I'll give it a start. I'll give it an attempt. And please jump okay, in okay. and correct me okay. or add anything. Um, so I think it is a very unique culture, yes. Um, but we are in Tokyo, which is a very vibrant international culture as well. Um, it's going very global. I've seen a lot of globalization with companies as well. So it's different, but if you come with a program like with Globus, with an MBA program, it's kind of like a, a safe bubble that brings you into the country. So you have a great community, you have professors, you have a network you can connect with, uh, you have the student services who you can always ask about um, cultural questions, just opening a bank account and all the little things. So they're very helpful in that sense. And you make connections as well with Japanese students who are able to help you out and love to hear about your culture. So. Um, how can it help you adapt and succeed in Japan? Like I said, it is a good bubble, brings you in. It's kind of a safe space for you to explore before being exposed to the real world um, and to make your network and build it up if you make the best of it. Gabby, I heard that you just came to Japan in 2013 for yes. the first time to study in Japan for yes. half a year? Uh, yes, for about half a year, yes. I see, but you never came before. Japan no, before. never to Asia actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a big jump, yes. Um, did you feel safe or did you feel like a scared or did you feel some kind of you know, uncertainty mm -hmm. or what was your experience? Oh, well, it was, it was a bit of uncertainty uh, coming into a completely new culture, not knowing the language. Um, and so there was some nervousness there. But Japan in itself has been the country I have felt the safest in, just because it is a very safe culture, people are very friendly. And at that time, um, I did come as well for study abroad, so with a school, which again provided that bubble. So there was a lot of nervousness, but also just excitement in coming to explore and to see this unique and diverse culture. So it was an experience I wouldn't forget. Um, but over time, it just becomes like second home. Very good. Because yeah. I think you asked all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> you have nothing else to add to that. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, what we will do is, for time's sake, is let us wrap up from here. And so thank you once again, Hori-san, for taking the time. Look forward to seeing you again at Globus. Yes. And we hopefully we can see you around. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us and have some dialogue. All right. Back to you, Sven. just uh, switch back. All right, I hope you can still see me here. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, a very unique and rare opportunity to have President Clovis here talking to you live from all over the world. It was happy to see many of you joining from Vietnam, uh, from the Philippines and other countries as well. So let me just wrap up because I, there were quite a few questions about um, you know, the program itself, how to finance. So let me just clear those out. So big thanks to Gabby. She did a wonderful job. She's also one of our marketing representatives of the Students Association. So very happy to see that. All right, so moving on, um, we mentioned quite a, a few MBA programs here at Globus. So let me just cover 
them here. So we have the full-time MBA, which Gabby is currently taking. It's an accelerated one-year MBA here in Japan with an internship. I myself, I did the part-time MBA in Tokyo. I'm a graduate of that program. So while working, I did my MBA. I even got married and had kids during my MBA. So very, very flexible. And the same for our online MBA. It's a real-time life. Uh, we have uh, students from all over the world taking it with us. We also have a pre-MBA, which I also took. It basically allows you to take business courses a la carte, whether it's online here at our Tokyo campus or in Osaka. Um, you can take those and then later on transfer them. So basically you can start anytime you want with your studies here at Globus. Just a quick overview because we had, I think, Grace asking about uh, what kind of um, support is there financially. Well, for the full-time MBA, um, the total tuition is around 36,000 US dollars and you need to quit your work and come to Japan. So it's quite um, a financial impact. That's why we do provide scholarships up to 50% for uh, people coming from overseas to join us. Uh, we also have a loan program that allows you to pay the remaining half uh, through loans and installment systems. For the part-time and the online MBA, as I mentioned, it's there are two-year programs. So basically, you'll be taking your courses on weekday nights and weekends, just like today. Um, the Average age tends to be a little bit more uh, senior, I would say experienced. So a lot of my classmates were also in their 40s, 50s, same with our online students. They have families, they have uh, demanding functions at work. And the uh, program there costs around 27,000 US dollars. Now we also provide scholarships for these and you can pay in installments since it's a two year program. But for the online especially, um, we're really trying to accelerate this program. So we have scholarships up to 50% for this as well. Please note that it's the same curriculum. We have the same lectures for all these programs. So even Gabby, as a full-time student, before coming to Japan, she could have taken online courses with us. Even now she has that option. She can also study part-time. So 50% of her credits can come from another program. If she spoke Japanese fluently, she could even take courses in Japanese as well. But all of our programs are 100% in English so you don't have to learn Japanese. Now, if you still want to, you know, join our MBA here or online, please note that for the online MBA and part-time MBA, we're still accepting applications for this year's intake, the October intake, and there's still one round left, which ends on June 26. Please note that for the full uh, online MBA, we still have 50% scholarships available. For the full-time MBA, uh, I'm afraid we already closed applications for the September intake this year, but this summer we'll reopen the application portal for those who want to join us in 2020, uh, right after the Olympics. So a very exciting time if you were to join our full-time MBA. So what are some of the next steps you could do? You could join other events. Today was a very exclusive event with the president, but we do have free trial classes as well. We'll also have uh, events which feature alumni. Uh, you can also talk to us. Um, I think Eunice has a lot of valid questions that maybe need to address with a personal touch. So you can always request a consultation with us, whether it's through email, phone, Skype, uh, nowadays, even Line, Messenger, WhatsApp, just let us know what your preferred contact method is. Talking about other online events, very excited to let you know that on the 16th of May, we have a very special webinar. It's called Alumni Insights, Applying MBA Skills in a Startup Environment. We've um, invited three of our graduates uh, to talk about their experiences in a startup environment. Also, two of them are entrepreneurs. Uh, such as Wilson Chan, who you can see here in the picture. So if you want to ask them how practical it was to run their own business, please join that. Uh, for those that are interested in the online MBA and want to maybe talk to some students or graduates about the program itself, on the 25th of May, we have a special info session there, as well as a online trial class on critical thinking uh, on June the 12th. So make sure to join that. Also, if you want to um, receive the latest news from us. Please do not um, forget to subscribe to our newsletter. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. In fact, uh, President Hori has a very great column on LinkedIn. Um, he's very active, so please uh, follow him on LinkedIn if you can, and on Twitter as well. I think he has over 100,000 followers. Uh, some of it is in Japanese, but occasionally English as well. Now, my colleague is going to share a link in the chat 
which will allow you to access our questionnaire. So please give us your feedback for today. Um, it's a very exclusive event, and of course we wanna keep on producing more of these. So please do take one or two minutes to fill it in uh, and give us your feedback. Uh, let me see the chat here, whether you can already see it. I believe so, so yeah, fill that in. And if you have any more questions, feel free to email us or um, just like Eunice, provide your contact details and we'll get back to you shortly. So we still have a couple of minutes to go. So if you have any MBA, pre-MBA, financing your MBA related questions, feel free to share it in the chat. I can also answer them as I'm an admissions advisor. So don't hesitate to share that with me. All right, so Josephine, um, you asked how to apply for the scholarships. It's very um, straightforward. So during your uh, application, which is done through an online uh, admission portal, you'll basically be able to answer a scholarship question about your kind of contributions you can make to Globus. Um, also, there's a, another question which asks about, you know, your maybe challenges to finance your MBA, so you can draw a picture there. But um, you'll also have an interview with us later during the application round. We're looking for great people who can contrib contribute to the program, uh, just like Gabby and many other participants, um, especially those who join full-time and online. Uh, we are quite generous with scholarships, but we do need to know that you fit our profile. So if you need any advice on what to write or how to paint a better picture, uh, let us know. We have uh, dedicated admissions advisors to help you with that application, including for a scholarship. Okay, um, Josephine is interested in online MBA. Will it be the same program with those that you mentioned when studying in Japan? Um, so the online MBA, a uh, uniqueness about it is you can take it anywhere in the world. It's live, so whether you're joining from Germany or the Philippines, you'll be having your classmates in front of you just like I'm here today. They'll be using their webcams, voice, and the professors as well. There's also virtual collaboration uh, systems that we have in place. So if you were to study here physically in Japan, I would say one big difference is you can go physically for a drink after <laughs> the class, but the interaction, the courses, uh, the course contents are exactly the same. It's just the physical aspect. Now we do have online students who come to Japan for around the week for a Japan MBA experience week at the beginning of their studies where they can take some classes here, meet their fellow uh, you know, students, their classmates, meet the professors. We recently also had uh, trips with some of our uh, school partners in Bangkok and in Shanghai. So you might even meet your classmates there as well. And of course, if you are in the area, do let us know. We're more than happy to introduce you uh, to the physical network. Now, if you are looking for a job or career in Japan, we highly recommend the full-time because that includes an internship and hands-on career advice. So that will be also a little bit different from those studying in Japan trying to obtain a job here. As for the recording, yes, we'll share the recording afterwards with everyone through email, so you can have another look at how uh, President Hori talked about his vision of, the, of business education. Do we have any other questions related to the MBA or admissions in particular? Um, we have about three more minutes, so feel free to share. If not, we can wrap up early here and uh, once again, thank you so much for joining. And Kondo-san, very happy that you had a good uh, opportunity to know about our vision and business. It's very important to hear from the founder himself, um, who's also my boss, a very inspirational man, um, has a great network. He invites many of his friends here over to Tokyo. So in the last nine years, Having worked for Globus, um, truly, I would think President Hori is one of account business leaders. So I hope you can meet him in person as well. Eunice, uh, you have an extra question. Okay. Competitive edge Globus MBA compared to the market in Malaysia. Okay. So um, we had Malaysian students before. What they noticed is the Globus MBA, one of our um, competitive edges, I would say, first of all, is practicality. Uh, quite a few programs in Southeast Asia uh, tend to be a little bit more theoretical, which is not bad per se. Um, they have PhD lectures. Um, but what our Malaysian graduates said that 
going to Globus gave them an edge because they, the knowledge that they obtained here, they knew it was applicable because they had CFOs, CEOs, senior marketing managers teaching them, and our contents tend to be very practical focused. Another edge I would say that we have on maybe other schools is the network. Um, if you come to Tokyo, it's, 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 it's quite diverse, but especially the Globus network, um, every year there's over 900 MBA students. We have executives from Toyota, Sony, Hitachi studying with us. So definitely if you wanted to have a Japanese business network, but even an international one, Globus can definitely provide that. Um, I often travel to Malaysia in the past, and I think maybe cost-wise, it can sound daunting, but Globus has provided scholarships to many Malaysian applicants to either come to Japan or study with us online. So if you have a good case and you fit our profile, I think we can uh, work something out as well, provided that you contribute as well. Okay. Yeah, and if you're ever in KL, we will have more trial classes there locally. As we're launching a Singapore com campus, we'll be having regular events in Singapore and KL. So do join us. Um, occasionally, we do have alumni joining. So if you want to create a network early on, please go ahead. All right. It is now 8.30 here in Japan. So for many of you, it's probably late afternoon or maybe early mornings or late at night. So we'll leave it here. Thank you so much for joining. So happy you could join us and see you at future online events. Thank you so much and arigato gozaimasu. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Eunice. All right, goodbye everyone.